Ah. <laughs> That's, that's it. That's all I got to say. Next video. Anyway, <laughs> what's up, guys? Fabio here once again. And I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today we are continuing on with the Hannibal Lecter series of reviews. Uh, we're going to be talking about, and this was a paid request that was sent in by Death Metal Elitist. Today we're going to be talking about the first sequel, Hannibal, which this this movie is so forgettable. I, I don't care. I because no one remembers this movie. No one talks about this movie. For a movie and I remember when this came out. For a movie that was so hyped up and it made money. Don't don't get me wrong. It made a lot of money when it came out. But for a movie that was so hyped up, made a bunch of money, and then the the reviews were pretty bad, honestly, and then people just kind of forgot about it after that initial initial run. Yeah, it's just, it's so forgettable. There's reasons, no one talks about this. Nobody talks about this. I don't hear, ever hear this movie get brought up. The only movie, really, that gets brought up is Silence of the Lambs. Manhunter was really good, but, of course, it didn't do that well over the years. It's kind of gotten a reappraisal, which is nice, but but Hannibal, even Red Dragon, the next one, that never gets talked about. The, the prequel, the other prequel, the prequel to the prequel doesn't get talked about either, but just so forgettable. At least in my opinion. But anyway, before we jump into this, as always, if anybody else would like to send in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There's a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. Just think before you send it in. I'm not asking for a billion dollars. Just think about it before you do it. And please send it in as family and friends. If you send it in, as goods and services, PayPal will take a cut. And there you go. I can't make it more simple than that. But it does not have to be just a movie review like this. It could be a TV series, a cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, rant streams, commentaries, and anything in between. Um, it does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos, so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you would like to see me cover here on this channel. I keep making them. At the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So thank you. You know, now, <laughs> I guess in a weird way, now I know why I never saw any of these movies all the way through. <laughs> Because there was, a, you know, Manhunter I really liked. And if you're talking about the act, the actual franchise, the actual series, the only one that I have enjoyed so far is Silence of the Lambs, which is the only one that most people enjoy. But this was so forgettable. Now, there is a book to this. Now, I didn't think that there was, but Death Metal Elitist corrected me in the comments on Manhunter. And then I did look, I did see it after the fact. I'm like, oh, fuck. So they did write a book sequel. So Silence of the Lambs, they wrote the book. It became the movie. And, of course, after the movie came out, the, the author, Thomas Harris... Now, I don't know if it was one of those situations where he was basically coerced into writing the book so they could have something to make a sequel off of like they did with, coincidentally, another movie that Julianne Moore was in, The Lost World Jurassic Park, where the only reason why the book was really written was so they could make a sequel to the movie and then they ended up not using any really anything from the book in the film. Now, I don't know if it was one of those situations or... He was offered a lot of money to write a sequel, so he did, or what, I don't know. But for 
whatever reason, and again, I have never read the books. Maybe one day I will, maybe I won't. From what I heard about the book for this movie, I don't want to fucking read it, but... Anyway, he wrote a sequel to The Silence of the Lambs. He wrote a book, and then we went from there. Now, what's interesting is Dino De Laurentiis... He owned. He still owned the 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 film rights to the character. So for the Silence of the Lambs, that was the only one he didn't produce. He let Orion Pictures use it for free because at the time there was no money involved really, and it was no one cared. And then because that movie was such a huge hit, he still controlled the rights to the character. So they had to license it from him. And he paid all this money to get the, the rights to it and everything else. So there you go. So he actually, even Hannibal Rising, he produced that. Which I think might have been one of the last movies he produced. I'm not sure. So they wrote the book and then they made his, they made them Again, I don't know why, but like again, I mean, as to... I mean, I know why they did it, because it was a lot of money involved. But did Silence of the Lam- blah, 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 blah. did Silence of the Lambs need a sequel? Whether as a book or a movie? No. I mean, it didn't. But because it made a shit ton of money, they made, a, they made another one, and then they made a prequel, and then they made another prequel, because we this franchise needed two prequels. Oh, well. But... The plot of... Let's just get to this. The plot of the film is... At the end of the first movie, Hannibal Lecter got away. We don't know if he killed Anthony Held's character. I would like to think that he did, but that's just me. So, he is actually hiding out in Italy, which is one of the positives of this movie because they filmed a lot of it in Italy, so I can't complain about that. Clarice, sorry, Clarice, she is on this operation. The shit gets fucked up. People get killed, including one of her fellow agents. So they wanted, want her to take the blame and take the fall for it and everything, and she is reassigned to work on the Hannibal Lecter case. There's a guy that survived, Gary Oldman. I had no clue he was in this movie until I started uh, watching it and like, why does that guy sound so familiar? And then I looked it up. It's Gary Oldman. He didn't take a credit, which we'll cover. But So Gary Oldman's character is one of the survivors of Hannibal Lecter. Uh, he's very rich. He's very powerful. He's also a fucking child molester. So again, I can't feel sympathy for characters that are fucking pieces of shit. Anyway, so he uses his influence and his money to get Clarice reassigned to work on Hannibal Lecter. Um, He's hiding out in Italy. There's a corrupt cop played by uh, Giancarlo Giannini, who I love, and it was he did a good job in the movie. And he starts to realize that this guy, because. Hannibal Lecter's under a different name and everything. That this is him because they start getting information, they start getting pieces, the cases reopen. So he's gonna go and try to get this bounty. It doesn't work. Um, and Gary Oldman's character sends these assassins to go get him. That doesn't work. And then he comes here to get with Clary, Clarice, and one of her people, Ray Liotta, he's corrupt, he's trying to get him to, and it's just this whole stupid thing, and Clarice helps him get away, and they kind of go in the in the direction where they might kind of fall in love with each other and team up, and that's actually in the book, which I thought was really fucking stupid, to be honest. So why would I want to read this book if it, if it completely does a, a fucking 180 from what it's supposed to be? 
And no matter how you look at it, Hannibal Lecter is a villain. Hannibal Lecter is a bad guy. He's not supposed to... I don't feel sympathy for him. This is a guy that went fucking crazy and started eating people. He's a villain. He's not a hero. And in this movie, they tried to turn him into fucking Freddy Krueger or Michael Myers or whatever. And it, it lost the fucking plot, at least in my opinion. And then at the end of the movie, he gets away and it ends there for the most part because, yes, they made two more films, but both of them are prequels. Which, why they did that, I don't know. I don't know why they just wouldn't make a third movie, but I don't know. We'll cover that in the next couple videos, but oh well. But anyway... I thought the plot was just really fucking stupid. Again, it's like they turn... I get it out of Silence of the Lamb. Oh, he's such a great character. Yeah, yes, he is. Don't get me wrong. He is a great character who was wonderfully per portrayed by Anthony Hopkins. But he was... what do you, He was the bad guy. He was not the hero. He was not the guy you felt sorry for. You kind of felt sorry for Clarice, but you, or at least you were supposed to. I don't feel bad for Hannibal Lecter. Yes, he's the the star of the of the franchise of the movies, but he's not the hero. He's the villain. But they tried to turn him into a hero. They tried to get you to feel bad for him and and you know sympathize. And I'm like, no, he is a psychotic maniac. He is a killer. I don't feel bad for Michael Myers when they tried to do that in the fucking Rob Zombie movies. Yeah, that worked. I don't feel bad for Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger was a, a pedophilic child killer. He did his thing with them and then he killed them. I don't feel sorry for the character. Is it a great character? Yes, but I don't feel bad for him. But he is the star of the franchise. That's why people went to go see the movies, so he would kill people. That's the point. But I don't feel bad for him. I don't feel bad for Chucky, because Chucky is a... Is a voodoo killer and I don't feel bad for him. Is it a great character? Yes. Is it fun to watch? Yes. But he's not the good guy. <laughs> Just because he is physically the doll, the good guy does not mean he is a good guy. But you get my point. Anyway. So they tried to turn him into like a fucking superhero. Hannibal Lecter. Cannibal! No, I don't think so, Scooter. And then they do this weird shit where him and Clarice are partners, like Batman and fucking Robin. I'm like, this is stupid. This is fucking dumb. This goes against everything that the first movie was about. The book, everything. You just do a fucking 180 and they're going to hook up. They're going to fall in love. Okay. <laughs> you know... I'm sure there were people that felt that way about Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm sure that it and did not end up so well for him. Ted Bundy. All these fucking retarded ass women. Oh my god, Ted Bundy is so hot. He would have killed you, bitch. What do you not understand about this? You're fucking retarded. Anyway. So I just thought that was so fucking stupid. And then, you know... Just to make it a sequel, okay, well, he's, he, he escaped in the first movie. He's gone. He's out there. But now, you know, they know where he's at and they're going to go get him. And these people are going to try to kill him. And, of course, he outsmarts them because he's, he's the hero. He's the good guy when he's really not. I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. So the, I thought the plot was fucking stupid. The things I like... I mean, I like that it's directed by Ridley Scott. I think it's very well directed. I love the blue color timing for a lot of the movie. I like that. Is this, you know... And it, it was... <laughs> Is this going to be anywhere near my favorite Ridley Scott movies? Fuck and no. <laughs> but 
you know, I'll I'll watch Gladiator, which is the movie he did before this. I'll watch Alien or Blade Runner or Black Rain. I'll watch those movies because they're a lot better. But it is Ridley Scott. It is well directed. Again, I do like the blue color timing for a lot of the film. I like that a good chunk of it was shot in Italy. I thought that was really cool. I thought that gave the movie a little bit of a of a flavor to it. It's like cool. I like the cast. I mean, there is a really good cast in this film. It's a shame that it was such a fucking shit movie, but I'm sure they were compensated fairly well. Anthony Hopkins does a great job as always, but I think that the problem is he's overexposed. Because in the first movie, he was there when he needed to be there. Hell, in Manhunter, he was there when he needed to be there. Michael Mann said that. Michael Mann said in an interview that he fought with this idea of we should show Hannibal Lecter more. And then he said, no, we shouldn't because this is a character that the audience would want to see more and more of. But we can't do that to him. And I agree with Michael Mann. And... In this movie, he was overexposed. It was too much of him. What made the first movie and Manhunter work is that you saw him when you needed to and not anymore. It's overexposure. But Anthony Hopkins does a great job because he's Anthony Hopkins. I like Giancarlo Giannini. I was always a fan of his work. Um... I like Ray Liotta. It kind of feels that maybe stuff got cut. Or maybe that's just how it was by design. But I like Ray Liotta. I like Julianne Moore as an actress. I think she was miscast. That's just me. You can't replace Jodie Foster as Clarice. Uh, You can't do it. I like Julianne Moore, but I think that she was miscast. Now, she was among the top choices... Okay, we'll be fine. I'm looking at the camera at the time on the battery. She was among the top choices because Jodie Foster couldn't do it because she was doing... I think she was actually directing a film at the time, so she couldn't do it. I don't really think she wanted to do it because I did read a couple things. She did say, the only reason I didn't do it is because I was directing a movie, but the script, and they had to change the script a lot because... They, they really wanted them to like fall in love and all this stupid... No, that was fucking stupid. And of course, everybody wanted a sequel because the first movie was so big and they waited 10 years to do it, but whatever. Again, I like her as an actress. I always have liked her as an actress, but I thought that she was miscast. That's just my opinion. I like Gary Oldman. He does a great job and the makeup is really good. He didn't take a credit because his name was not going to be on top of the poster. He apparently was very upset about that to the point where he dropped out of the movie and then he did it again or he came back into the fold but he said he wanted to go uncredited. And they said, well, it's Hannibal Lecter, it's not Gary Oldman, so there you go. I like him, I don't care for his character because his character is a piece of shit and I don't feel bad when the character dies. I don't feel bad that Hannibal Lecter fucked this guy up, but Gary Oldman does a great job, he gave a great performance because he is Gary fucking Oldman. So there you go. Other than that, is there anything that I liked about this movie? No. I thought it was, the plot was fucking stupid. It, without credits, it's a, it's a little bit over two hours. I thought it was too long. I, I thought it was boring. I sat through the first hour. And then I just started like clicking through and fast forwarding. Because I'm like, I'm bored. And I and you know the first movie was under two hours, but it built tension. It cut at a good pace. It kept you thinking. It kept you going. This movie had none of it. This movie did not have any of the grit or the edge or what made that first movie what it was. Fuck and no, Scooter. Fuck and no. I 
I thought it was boring. There were times where I felt like I was going to fall asleep. Because mostly the first hours, other than the, the opening action scene, which wasn't much to be honest. Most of it's just, okay. We need to find Hannibal Lecter. Okay. What's is she? Oh, I got a letter. Oh, the letter smells like this. You can only get this here. Okay, well, let's start there. Oh, well, he looks like Hannibal Lecter. It must be. Okay, I'm going to go get him. And that didn't work. I thought it was, again, I thought it was boring. I thought it was too long. I mean, the actors did good with their performances, but it was nothing special. It was nothing that really stuck. I'm just like, okay, I would rather, I would much rather watch the first film. You know, if we're talking Ray Liotta, I'd much rather watch Goodfellas or Copland or No Escape or Narc, Phoenix, um... Dominic and Eugene, which I think is a pretty underrated film. There's so many other Ray Liotta films I'd rather watch. For Julianne Moore, I mean, I'd rather... Don John, she was good in that. Boogie Nights, I mean, there's so many other movies I'd rather watch. I, when the movie came out, they made a big deal about the brain scene. I'm watching it, and I'm like, that's it? What pisses me off about it is, okay, so a Hannibal Lecter film can show a guy getting his his head removed and his brain and ripping the skin off, so that's okay, but, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street films were too much, Halloween films were too much, I mean, all the Friday the 13th movies were too much, apparently, um, Scream was too much, Hard Target was too much, The Crow was too much, you know, all these movies that got cut down significantly, but it's if it's a Hannibal Lecter film, it's okay. Because, you know, children aren't going to watch those movies. Yeah, okay. Bullshit my fucking dick. Now, another positive of the movie, there was mostly practical effects. The only time it was CG was that, because you could tell when Ray Liotta was talking and moving that that stuff was CG. But it, I can't complain that it... it the makeup, the practical makeup is good, and some, and a lot of the effects are practical, most of it. So that I can't complain about. But the rest of it, I'm just like, whatever. They made such a big deal about that scene when it came out, and the trailers used the shot. There's the shot of of Hannibal Lecter is holding Julianne Moore, and he's walking, and they use that in all the trailers and everything. They made such a big fucking deal about it. And again, the movie was highly anticipated. It was a big deal. It broke records and everything like the first movie did with the box, some of the box office stuff. It made a shit ton of money. It made over $100 million in America. And then worldwide, it, it made like another like 180 or something. It did very, very well when it came out. And then when it came out on, on video and DVD... It did very well, too. But after that, I haven't heard a single fucking person mention this movie. It is that boring. It is that bland. It's that forgettable. It, you know, and there's so many movies that are like this. They come out, they make all this money, and then that's it. And then you never hear about them again. This is one of those movies. The, the reviews when it came out were not good. Everyone said it was inferior to the first movie. Why are the characters going in this direction? Why are they trying to turn Hannibal Lecter into a superhero or, or you know, like a Freddy Krueger type of character? And why is Julianne Moore's, why is Clarice helping him and, and potentially going to fall? It's like, where the fuck did they go with this? And no one, I, again, I don't remember anybody talking about this movie since it has come out. When it came out, I do remember when it came out. Yes, I remember the marketing and the and never and oh, it's so good, it's so good. Yeah, well, you know, twenty three fucking years later, ain't nobody talking about this movie, Jack. I tell you what, because 
it's not good. Like, it's fucking boring. It's bland. It was unnecessary. They spent 80-some million dollars for... Most of it was probably to Anthony Hopkins. Not most of it, but a good chunk of it went to Anthony Hopkins and Ridley Scott. I just... I don't get it, man. And you know what? If you like the movie, that's cool. That's fine. That's your prerogative. That's your thing. Go for it. But I, you know, again, there's reasons why this movie has never been talked about since 2001. Because it came out in February, like the first movie, and then the video DVD came out a few months after that. Again, I don't think I've ever heard anybody mention this movie since it came out. It, it's that fucking forgettable. It's that bland. It was that boring that no one has mentioned it in 23 years. So again, maybe there's reasons why I have never really explored these films. I mean, now is an opportunity because it was a paid request, which is fine, but... I will never watch this movie again. I will never buy this movie. I will never get it on VHS, DVD, whatever. Uh, I would never recommend this movie. If people ask me, hey, what should I do with the Hannibal Lecter films? Watch Manhunter and look at it as its own thing. And then watch Silence of the Lambs. Look at that as its own thing. Everything else, if you're really, really curious, cool. If not, you ain't missing nothing. You ain't missing a thing. So, again, I maybe, you know, again, now that I'm watching these movies and putting two and two together, I could see why I never explored them. So, there you go. But this movie was so bland. It was so boring. I will never watch this again. Never. Even if I'm bored. Like, if I'm bored sitting around... Like, all right, what can I put on to kind of like help me fall asleep? Yeah, I, I got plenty of stuff here that could do shit. I'll just take a fucking shot of NyQuil and say, fuck it, do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, we got two prequels to go because we needed a prequel and then we needed a prequel to the prequel. So we'll cover that in the next couple of videos. But as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care. And we'll talk to you soon. Later. Uh.